So this is the um, uh, rudder section, and that's the fulcrum that the uh, rudder will revolve around, and that's how I'm going to drill that out. This is the tail section, the horizontal hydroplanes. Um, these are really quite big, but a lot of them are going to be taken up with the, with the hull when we cut the hull out. And this is the um, hydroplane that goes on the conning tower, once again with its little fulcrum there. So, um, we shall continue. Okay, I've peeled all the paper off, now I'm just using some acetone to get the remainder of the glue off these surfaces, particularly the inner surfaces where I'm going to glue them together. Um, Once I've done this, I'm going to use the um, um, actual acrylic glue, which is not so much glue as weld. It's going to weld it all together. It's going to be like a solid piece of acrylic again, which is the reason I want to get rid of this little bit of glue. So now you can see properly with this uh, piece that's going to work for the... Um, stern planes. That now lines up nicely and I'm going to glue that together and then I've got the hole for the fulcrum that runs right through where I want it to. Okay, now we're using this uh, Acribond and this will um, mean that I will never get these apart again. And I, at that point, obviously shave them down endwise to get the shape of the hydroplane. And now I'm starting the really fun part of grinding into this, what is now a 12 mil piece of Perspex, the aerofoil shape that's required for these um, uh, hydroplanes. And a great, a good belt sander like this is really worth it. It's just fantastic. Gradually, um, this uh, ground down this huge piece of perspex to exactly what it should be and although this is sped up you can see it didn't probably take more than uh, I think about 30 to 40 minutes to do the whole thing and it's a very enjoyable process as long as you don't get your fingers caught uh, in the sandpaper which you, you tend to a bit. So as long as you're prepared for that, you're fine. So these are looking absolutely lovely. Very happy with that. Even that one comes out to about 10 millimeters in the end. All right, I think this is a fairly watertight method of making um, hydroplanes and rudders. We've got the solid piece that you've seen and that, we'll just look at the rudder to begin with. This solid piece that I've machined out looks like this. I've put the nice hydrofoil shape on it all. It's got um, a cut with the ripsaw on the fulcrum that it's going to twist around. So what are we going to do? First thing is to look at the stern of the boat, work out from the plans where that fulcrum is to be and to drill a hole there, which is the right size for the rod, not the sleeve, but the rod. Then, 
when I've worked out roughly where that's going to be, I can map this onto here. And it's going to sort of look like that. So, what do I do? I cut it out. Then, once I've cut it out, I put these individual pieces in the drill press and I drill them out for the size of the rod, not for the sleeve. Then I mount a piece of rod into the stern of the boat and I might hot glue it in or whatever it's going to take. I don't, I don't really care. But I'm going to spend some time making sure it's square. Not only uh, horizontally, but from the end of the, end of the boat, everything lines up really nicely. So I'll spend a bit of time fiddling with that. And then I'm going to take these pieces and slip them on, on either side. And, of course, this will not be right. So I'm going to um, grind them and machine them until they make a really, really nice mating fit on there. Okay? Alright, that's... Step number one. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I have to think about the linkage inside. So I'm going to uh, get on the lathe and I'm going to make a piece of brass which is going to look a bit like this. It's going to be um, thick enough to really hold nicely a grub screw and I want a hole through the middle which is for the rod once again. And then, what I'm going to do on the lathe, I'll make it all on the lathe, of course, is just trim that down. It'll look a bit like a barbell. And in fact, here's one right here. You can see that. Once I've done that, I'm going to then take this piece of rod out of here. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to open this hole out so that it will now fit the sleeve. Okay? I'm going to open this out probably 20 millimeters so that it will take the sleeve. Okay? And then I'm going to put a piece of rod right through here again. And I'm going to use my set square and I'm going to, so that I can use it against the fulcrum of both of these together, and I'm going to draw a line like that and like that, which is perfectly 90 degrees to the fulcrum, and I'm going to use a fretwork saw, and I'm going to cut these off. And what I'm going to be left with are these little stubs. Okay, so now we assemble it. And what we do is we use some pieces of sleeve that are probably about 20 uh, millimeters long. And I'm going to glue them into here. I'm going to make sure, I'll do this just uh, with dry to begin with to make sure everything's square. But I want to glue one into there. I want to glue one into there. I want to mount this one onto it, which is going to hold it really firmly um, as, the, as the glue dries. Whoops, that just goes on like that. And then I'm going to put this in between them. It's look a bit like that. And I'm just going to push, push it up so that in fact everything is mating together nicely. And then I'm going to put the rod through the middle of everything to hold it all together, make sure it's all in shape and let it dry. Now, as you can see, getting that right is the critical part. But if you do your work before, you can do it really well. And the result then is that I can add my, the top part of my rudder and the bottom part of my rudder. And they're all connected very nicely and you can twist them around and that's all good. Alright, we're halfway there. What's the next step? I've got to fix this up in the middle. So, pull it all off again, and then we're just going to start to play with this piece in the middle. And what, what I've done, and is, has worked pretty well, is I have taken my little dumbbell, like this, and then taken a piece of brass, maybe between one and two millimeters thick, uh, which fits like that onto the side of that, it might be 
We've got a five millimeter shaft, so six or seven millimeters, eight millimeters is, is about right. And I'm going to silver solder that right onto there. At some point in this process too, I'm going to drill this and drill this while it's in that position and put a, a three mil thread into there for a grub screw. Then I'm going to hold this in the vise, so imagine it's that way, I don't want to redraw it. Get my file and start to file the in part, in, inner part of this out so that in fact what we're left with is a shape like that which will fit the 6mm shaft and then because this is the stern rudder I'm going to solder, not silver solder, just ordinary solder a ball joint, on a brass ball, jo ball joint onto there and we're nearly done. The next thing to do will be to take my uh, rudder and um, glue in my rod. In fact, I'm going to put a 3mm grub screw in there to jam it tight. Cut it off to length because I don't need it to go down any further than around about here. Then we install our rudder with the new rod. But before we do, we put this in place so that it goes into here, into our little contraption, da 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 da, connect up the ball joint and start playing with it to get it to work.